You will have to hold still, sir. I simply cannot render your likeness with you squirming so. Squirming's been the curse of my life, young fella. Can't seem to stay put for long. Gotta keep moving here to there. Seems to be my nature. Looks to be like I squirm back about 60 years or so. Either my looking glass has been lying to me of late, or you're in terrible need of glasses, son. That ain't a picture of that. Huh? Land of Goshen. I'm 86 years old. That's one of my baby pictures. Daniel, what we've set out to capture is the world's image of you. The famous trailblazer, the renowned marksman, the fierce Indian fighter. Now, I'm writing this book on the romance of your heroic life. The painting is simply to illustrate the glory you represented. Uh, well, you understand, don't you? Nope. I ain't never been one much on reading and writing, but I can tell when I'm being spoke to with crooked words. It's all wrong, son. I, I, I don't understand. First off, I ain't never worn no coonskin hat. No, sir. Been partial to a brown flat brim all my days. Keeps the sun off better. Well, wouldn't you agree that the coonskin hat makes you look more the ferocious hunter? Another thing. You don't go kill a grizzly just to pose for the neighbors like you got me doing. You only kill him to stop him from killing you. And there ain't never been no glory to be found in what I done. Any fighting and killing I done, I done only because I had no way out of it. If you'd have been there, been where I went and seen what I seen, you wouldn't be writing no book about romance and glory. The friends, the family I lost, wouldn't care to be a part of that book. Dano, uh, wait! Where are you going? Need some elbow room. Too crowded nowadays. Neighbors squeezing in all around me. Neighbors? The only humans we saw were a good 70 miles from here. Too close! Time to move on. Daniel, wh when did you first take to the woods? First time I laid eyes on a city. Me and city ways. Been at odds with one another since I was a young'un on my pa's farm in North Carolina. Hey, yep. Almost done, Miss Sally. Let's finish the roll. Hey, yep, there. Don't you try and hide from me. Ooh, I'll find you. And when I do, boy, I'll tie your tail in a knot. Sarah, what's the fuss? You've got a beauty of a bee in your bonnet. Aye, and your son put it there, Squire Boone. <laughs> My son, is he now? Well, no son of mine would do this to his mother's favorite sitting stool. He took his knife to it. <laughs> what are you aiming to do to him, Mother? Well, when I catch up to him, he surely won't be having need of this sitting stool for a while. <laughs> well, you might not think it's so funny when you see the same carved into the barn door and the butter churn and the side of the wagon. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't mind it half as much if the boy could at least spell his own name right and proper. Look at this. Boone. B-O-O-N. Sarah. I think we'd best leave the spelling to others and leave the shooting to Daniel. Our boy's the sharpest eye ever to look down a rifle barrel. Being a crack shot won't make him a life, but Farman will. He's got to learn to do the chores of a farm. And you've got to teach him, Squire Boone. He's got the wanderlust, Sarah. His feet itch something fierce. And he's got to go scratch him before he'll ever rest easy. Now, some folks are put on earth to take root. Others are put here to wander. Daniel's a type who'll keep moving till he finds that high, far-seeing place atop a mountain somewhere. There. Well, what you aiming to do with the critter, Henry? Why, I'm aiming to bring the varmint to the ground, is what? Dan boom, you along on the same hunting trip I am or not? Are you hungry? Hungry? What's my being hungry got to do with shooting a squirrel? Nothing if you're planning on eating a squirrel cause you're starving. If you are, it's hunting. And if you aren't, it's killing. Carnation! 
What are you gonna do? Try and talk that squirrel down? Me and old Tick Licker here are gonna bark that squirrel to the ground. Bark him? What's that? We're gonna shoot the branch right out from under him. Well, that's not gonna do nothing but make that critter powerful man. <laughs> that's the point. You ever hear tell of a place they call Cane Tuck? I heard some hunters who'd been there talking about it. And they say it's got trees that reach up and touch the clouds. And soil that'll grow any seed a man just drops from his pocket. And buffalo and deer running so thick you gotta take care not to step on them when you walk. Yep, Cane Tuck. I figure on going there someday. I don't know. This Cane Tuck sounds a mite dangerous to me. Any place that's only been seen by a couple of hunters ain't been settled proper. And if there ain't no settlers, you can bet your bottom dollar it's crawling with engines. <laughs> I don't know about you, but it kind of makes sense to me. You go visit my farm, you're going to come across a whole parcel of boons. Stands to reason you go visit engine land, you're going to come across a whole parcel of engines. It ain't engine land. Just because they was there first, just because they settled down on it, don't make it theirs. <laughs> I wonder what my pa would do if you told him the farm he was on first, the farm he settled, wasn't his after all. Daniel Boone, I'm tired of squabbling with you about engines. I swear, sometimes I think you're half engine or half crazy, or both. <laughs> Let's go. As I live and breathe, Rebecca Bryan. Henry Miller. I see that rowdy boom boy is with you. Oh, Daniel? Oh, we was out doing some hunting. Yep, looking for grizzly today. Goodness, isn't that dangerous? No, not when you can shoot like I can. Show me how you do it, Henry. Oh, shucks. Well, okay. Daniel, fetch me my shooting piece, will you? Is, um, what's his name? Daniel. Is he a good shot, too? Well, I'm trying to teach him how, but I don't think he'll ever catch on. There, that pine cone yonder, I'll just shoot her off at the stem so you can take her home as a keepsake. Oh, what happened? He did it a purpose, Rebecca. He overloaded my powder. Oh, Daniel Boone, I never want to see you again. Rebecca Bryan, you better think that over, because I aim to marry you someday. Never. Someday. Well, a couple of years come to pass. I was coming back from a deer hunt early, so as I could do some trading at the county fair. Running Fox? Who? You have come to shoot? Always ready to match old Tick Licker against another man's rifle. <laughs> White Top, the renegade. He was banished from his own tribe for stealing. Be careful, Boone. He is bad. I dealt with many a bad white man, Running Fox. I reckon I can deal with a bad Indian. Bad's bad, no matter the color. Boone, I hear you shoot well. Almost like White Top. <laughs> but no words from Boone? White Top must be right then. I reckon words won't win me a blue ribbon. They don't stick in the bullseye as good as bullets. Looks like it's down to just you and me, White Top. Fire away. Dead center! You missed.
miss the target pool. <laughs> Nano landed on top of White Tops. Bullseye! It's a tie! Rebecca? Care to take a canoe ride with me? I got something mighty important to ask you. I I always had two dreams. One of them was to see Kane Tuck from Hill to Valley. Reckon that'll happen someday. And the other. Well. I was kind of hoping you'd... I mean, you and I could... What do you think? If you mean marry you, I will someday. When do you figure that someday might be? Saturday. Saturday? You mean you will? Me? You marry me on Saturday? Oh. 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 Under one condition, Daniel Boone. You gotta build our home far away from any water. I can't imagine spending the rest of my life getting knocked into some lake because of Daniel Boone. I'll fix the water now, Pa. Someday, Dana. Someday? You wanted to go see Kane Tuck? Someday? Just a dream, Becky. I've got a family to think of now. You and James. I watched you staring at the setting sun. You're thinking of Kane Tuck. Go. Go see it. Get it out of your head, Dana. I don't want to share you with Kane Tuck. And I can't have all of you till you stop dreaming about it. Today, Dana. Today is someday. Cane Tuck, Mr. Harden. Cane Tuck. It pulled on me and it wouldn't let go. I knew it wouldn't till I finally laid eyes on it. That's her, John. Kane Tuck. Daniel, two years is enough. We gotta leave. Yeah, I'll go, but I'm coming back. Kane Tuck is where I belong, John. Engines? No. Four legged trouble. No! Rifle fire will bring Indians. Moon, we meet once more. <laughs> Leave them things be. They belong to us. No more. I steal them from you. What are you doing in Kane Tuck? I came to Kane Tuck, to where Cherokee tribe lives. Now, I will steal from Cherokee. <laughs> Cherokee, Shawnee, Catawba, every tribe will soon learn to do what White Top does. Steal. The white man steals from the Indian, takes his land, his buffalo, pushes people away. I'm not pushing anybody. King Tuck's big enough for the red man and the white man. Maybe so, Boone. White Top, I don't care. The red man will fight the white man, and White Top will steal from them both. <laughs> Too bad you can't shoot half as good as you can steal. White Top can shoot better than Boone. That's so. Let's have us a contest then. Give me my rifle. Moon is smart, but not as smart as White Top. No, it is better for me to keep your rifle. Baker, you wasn't up to the challenge. Bone can do nothing that White Top cannot. That's so. How do you do in tracking? 
I'll wager you can't give me and John a head start. Then track us down. No, White Top's only good at thieving. Go, Boone. When the sun rises over the treetops, I will come after you. And when I catch you... <laughs> run, Boone, run fast. Then learn your lesson. The sun's peeking over the trees. I figure White Top's on the trail. Knowing him, he started long ago. We're leaving a trail a baby could follow. Come on, John. We gotta get ourselves lost. You can't follow a man's footprints if he don't leave none. Ah, Boone thinks good, like an Indian. Look at the drop down. What do we do now? We turn around and go back. Like I said, Boone, no tie this time. White Top is the winner. <laughs> time to leave, John. I'm home, Becky. Oh, yes, but for good. Deciding to rid Kentucky of the hostile savages, Daniel Boone set out to... Oh, hold it! Hold it, you'd better rein in that runaway wagon you're calling the truth. I never decided to rid no man of his home. Kentuck was big enough for red man and white man both. You know, Mr. Harden, a man protecting his family ain't hostile. And if that's being a savage, I reckon I'm one, too. After spending two years in Kentucky, you are the only man for the job, Mr. Boone. Just what is this job you're talking about? This country has growing pains, Mr. Boone. It's splitting at the seams with people. I want you to go to Kentucky and purchase it from the Indians. Buy Kentuck? Yes, sir. My partners and I want to buy it. Have you survey the land, take settlers into established communities. I don't think the Indians want your money. No, but they have need of food, clothing, horses. Mr. Boone, you and I both know that sooner or later, there will be men who will try and take the land away. I'm willing to pay for it. You might not know much about Indian ways, but you seem to know about white man ways. I gotta talk to Becky. Becky, it's up to you. Is it worth it, this cane tuck? It's worth it. And then some. Then we'll go. Move out! Unafraid, the hardy settlers set off for Kentucky without looking back. If they'd have looked back, they'd have turned back. Mr. Harding, they wasn't afraid. They was plumb terrified. For good reason. Huh? Um, spirits are low. And food supply is lower. Folks is grumbling and talking about turning back. Almost there. I'll go hunting. At least some food will shush the grumbling in their stomachs. Oh, you can't go. You're the only thing keeping them going. If any you leave, they'll turn and hightail it home. I'll go. You're too young, James. Well, you were six when you bagged your first buck. I'm an old man compared to that. Go on, but keep an eye wide open.
He's been gone too long, Dana. How much longer should we wait? I'm going after him now. James. Oh, no. My son. My James. Oh, Dano, what do we do now? We're gonna ache real hard, and we're gonna keep on living, Becky. What? I don't know if I can. We can, if we do it together. And grabbing old Tick Licker, Daniel set out to avenge his son's death. No, no I stayed alongside Becky. No, sir. Me and Rebecca set out to do what we started to do. Settle Kane Tuck. The invader has not been stopped by rivers, not been turned back by mountains. He will force the Indian toward the west, till the red man be no longer a roamer of the forests and a hunter of game. I hope that ain't the case, Okanastota. I truly do. There is a dark cloud over this country. Beware of the Indians to the west and north. They are bad people. When it comes to war, they will kill white people as well as red. You, Boone, are a good man. We wish you no hurt, but we cannot stop what comes. We give you from this place, Boone. You bought it, it is yours for now. Having bought Kentucky, Daniel set about chopping what was to be known as the Wilderness Road. It was done. It had just started, Mr. Harding. It had just started. Boonesboro was a beginning. But if we wanted more folks to come to Kentuck, we had to go out and build more outposts for them to live in. And giving birth ain't easy. With the winter snow coming on, it was time to think about feeding our growing family. what we got is here. Who might ye be, stranger? This man is Boone. All Shawnees know of Boone. Yes? And tell me, Blackfish, as chief of the Shawnee, would you think this fellow to be a worthy captive? Boone is a brave man, trusted by Shawnees. I don't know. For a brave man, he sure give up on a fight quick. It seemed to me that 500 to 1 was pretty good odds going against me. I'll go you one at a time, though, starting with you. Enough, Gertie. Mr. Boone, you, sir, may consider yourself a prisoner of war. War? What war are you be speaking of? Permit me to introduce myself. I am Captain Jonathan Stearns of His Majesty's Army. You Kentuckians don't seem to be aware that England is at war with you American rebels. A war you will lose, and a war you, sir, will help us fight. If I don't... Then, sir, I fear that your friends and family will all be killed. Your outpost is peaceful, Mr. Boone. You, and you alone, can keep it peaceful. A refusal, I'm afraid, will result in tragedy. How many are there inside? Enough to give you what for, I reckon? Boom, do not confuse the thoughts from your heart with those of your head. There are 500 of my brave. Tell me, Blackfish, I've always heard you as a wise chief, 
an honorable chief. How come you're fighting alongside the likes of these snakes? Allow me to answer for you, Blackfish. Blackfish has a price boom, just like Simon Gertie here. The British Army is paying Blackfish food and money in exchange for his services. I suspect that the chief has a sense of honor. Notice how he lowers his eyes in shame when I speak of money. Now, Mr. Gertie is another matter. He is a Kentuckian like yourself. However, he has no pride. He has gone and always will go to the highest bidder. He's trash. In a manner of speaking, yes. I hope you can't make him give up, Boone. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens to him if they try and fight. War makes peculiar friendships, Boone. Blackfish and Gertie are my friends because I have the money to make them so. Someday, perhaps, the situation will change and I can hire you to fight them. <laughs> you don't give a hoot about nobody as long as you got your pretty uniform and your shiny buttons and a war to fight, do you? Absolutely not, Boone. I am paid to kill. It is my job, and I enjoy my work. Now, will you cooperate? Boon, a good chief does not let his pride betray his people. Think deeply. Surrender. Live to fight another day. I've got your word that no hurt will come to my men. You have it. <laughs> Move on out, Boone. Gertie, we're gonna go at it someday. I'm looking forward to it. And you're never gonna forget it. Mr. Harding, I want you to put down in your book that that day was the first time in his life that Daniel Boone ever give up without a fight. And I want you to put down right next to it that it was the last day he ever did it. Surrendering? No, that won't do for the book about a brave hero. I'll, ch I'll change it. Don't change a letter of it. Looking back on it, I think it was the bravest thing I ever did in my life. It was harder not to fight than to fight. And a whole lot smarter. <laughs> You've done well, gentlemen, very well. The capture of so many Kentuckians should present a monumental blow to the colonial forces of that blasted Colonel Washington. Blackfish, you should be pleased with the efforts of your tribal members. Colonel Morgan, I am pleased that there was no bloodshed. Ah, uh, yes, well, I would have preferred the total destruction, personally. Now we must feed and clothe the prisoners. But war is expensive at times, however, His Majesty King George will honor his agreement with you and your people. In addition to the food already received, you shall receive money for each captive. What about my payment, Colonel? You'll receive your bag of gold, Gertie. Tell me, Gertie, does a man of your nature sleep well at night, selling your own countrymen out? Does it trouble you? Nah, the bag of gold makes me sleep like a baby. I see. Blackfish, you can collect your payment from the quartermaster. Good day. Boone goes with me. All your money cannot buy him from the Shawnee. Boone, why should you want such a man? He is wise. He thinks of his people. I wish Boone to become my son. Someday, he will lead Shawnee as their chief. Remarkable. Why in the world would you want a white man to rule your people? Boone is two men. White man and red man, but his eyes see no color, only men. He has always known what we have yet to learn. Blackfish, you may have this boon fellow with my compliments. Stupid heathen, turning down gold for the likes of Boone. Oh, on the contrary, Mr. Gertie, Blackfish took Boone, yet we are still left with you. Why is it, do you suppose, that I feel I've been swindled? to be my son. You are Shawnee from this day forward. You shall be called Sheltowee and have every honor due the son 
of a Shawnee chief. Blackfish, being adopted by you is a powerful big honor, sure enough. But I already got myself a family back at Boonesboro. I won't lie to you. I'm gonna go back to them first chance I get. Dick Sheltowe, make him Shawnee. He is your brother, but never leave his side. Daniel, a captive in the heathen camp, could only curse his fate while he plotted his escape back to civilization. You're only half right, Mr. Harding. I was always on the lookout for a chance to make a break for it. But I never did curse my fate. No, sir. My Shawnee brothers taught me a lot about living off of the land and such. They only took what they needed to live, and only when they needed it. Considering they've been doing a pretty good job of it for a lot longer than most, it made sense to me to learn a few things. Besides, cursing your fate ain't gonna change it a lick. I'd been with the Shawnees for four months. And even though I couldn't get Rebecca and my family out of my mind, I began to think of the Shawnees as my second family. Especially when I held one of the young'uns in my arms when he took sick. Brought back memories of my boy, James, though. Made me realize that I had to get home to my own family as soon as I could. We're going to attack Boonesboro, Blackfish. We'll need your help again. And this time we ain't taking no prisoners. No. My people will rest through the winter. You've already waited too long. These Kentuckians are stealing your land. Help us drive them away, and His Majesty will return your land to your people. Make up your mind, Chief. We gotta catch them by surprise. <laughs> Sheltoe, where do you go, my adopted son? I go to my real family, Quiet Dove. They're in danger at Boonesboro. Your family is here with the Shawnee. No, Shawnee mother. You and me both know better. I must go. You understand that. And I must try and stop you. You understand that. Shawnees, Sheltoe is leaving us. Catch him. I ran like I never run before. Four days straight. 160 miles stood between me and Boonesboro. My Shawnee brothers stuck to me like a tick on a hound dog. Wait up, Samuel. Don't fire! I know it can't be, but unless my eyes are fooling me, that's Daniel Boone. Listen up and listen quick. The British are bringing the Shawnees to attack Boonesboro. How many men we got to stand and fight? Oh, not many, Daniel. More than half of them are out hunting for food. Winter's been hard on us here. It's gonna get a lot harder if we don't put up a strong showing for the Shawnee. Take all the extra clothes you can find. Stuff them full of straw. Put them up on the walls with rifles. At least we can look like we're ready for them. I'll be with you shortly. I gotta go tell Becky and young Daniel I'm home. Daniel, you, you gotta know something. Rebecca! Daniel, I'm home! Daniel, they went back east. It's been so long, they, they came to figure you was dead. I'm, I'm sorry, Daniel. Yeah.
Cole. Uh, I sure hope this works. again, Boone. I suggest you do a second time what you did a first. Namely, surrender. Funny. That's what I was just about to say to you. Why did you leave your village, Sheldowie? Had to, Blackfish. I missed my wife and my son. As a father, you know why I left. Yes, I too miss a son. Come back. Sorry, Shawnee father. I don't belong. How do you figure it? Can't tell. Reckon we must be ready, though. Have your rifle handy. Keep the gates closed. You'll be locked outside, Banner. So will the Shawnee. and get you inside. You won't make it out there. No. You open them gates and Boonesboro will fall to the British. Keep them tight. Step over about 12 paces from the gate and start digging a tunnel. It appears that the elusive Mr. Boone is going to once again slip free of our grasp. This is good. Temporary blackfish, merely temporary. Think they give up, Dan? Nope. They just started a waiting game. Well, what are they waiting for? For us to run out of food, most likely. Well, would you looky there? I thought skunks curled up and slept through the winter. What you aiming to do? Gonna bark me a polecat to the ground. <laughs> well, I haven't heard a peep from them woods in more than two days, Daniel. I tell you, they packed up and left. No reason to leave. They didn't finish what they set out to do. They got something in store. You can bet on it. Sure quiet enough. A mite too quiet. When a fella's quiet, it means he's thinking on something. Ready your braves, Blackfish. I gotta hand it to you, Stearns. You're a man after my own heart. I was totally unaware that you had a heart, Mr. Getty. Tell them to fire! Fill the buckets! Hurry! That wood's tender and dry as dust. No use, Daniel. The fire's spreading faster than we can fill the buckets. Mr. Boone is about to become history. <laughs> it's time to give up, Daniel. Not by my timepiece, it ain't. Well, what can we do? I'll think of something. Tell me you thought up that rain. Samuel, only the good Lord can make it rain. Of course, 
He needs somebody to tell him where it should fall now and again. What does it take to do that boot in? The Great Spirit watches over Shell Toby. Get back here! You can't leave! Well, what do we do now? I shall return to headquarters. I have other battles to attend to. This one is over. But what about Boone? Take my advice, Mr. Gertie, and leave Mr. Boone to those more capable than you and I. We seem to be no match for him. Single-handedly, Daniel defeated the British at the Battle of Boonesboro. Mr. Harding, I swear you don't seem to hear a word I say. Boonesboro was filled with good men ready to fight for what was theirs. I was just one of a number. Why are you so dead burned set on making me out a hero? I was just a fellow who was homesick enough to get a fight done so he could go home to his family. You were a hero. They made you an assemblyman when the war was over, didn't they? Yep. And that's what makes me sure that I wasn't no hero. Because a hero is supposed to get a reward. And I'm here to tell you that being made an assemblyman ain't no reward at all. Gentlemen! Gentlemen! Silence! Thank you. Now, the issue at hand is far from agreement. Is Kentucky to be made a state in this union or not? It has been suggested that we hear from Assemblyman Boone on the matter. Mr. Boone, the floor is yours. Mr. Boone. Mr. Boone has left us a note containing his views on the subject. I quote, Need elbow room, gone hunting, D. Boone. I find it hard to believe that a man who had fought all his life simply gave up. I didn't give up. The fighting gave up on me. Heck, I wanted to sign up with Andy Jackson and fight in the War of 1812, but they turned me down flat because of my age. Can you believe that? Turn down a fit fighting man just because he was 78 years old. What happened to Blackfish? Well, I hear tell he passed on. He's probably waiting for Shell Toey to join him in the happy hunting grounds. Shell Toey? See, I would think that after all the Shawnees did to you, you would try and forget that name. Forget the Indian altogether. Forget? How can you forget your family? I was a lucky man, Mr. Harding. I had two families, a white family and a red family. Daniel, uh, let's forget about the Indian for a moment and talk about you. If you're gonna forget about the Indian, I'm through talking, Mr. Harding. Daniel, times have changed. For all intents and purposes, the Indian is gone. Yeah. Yeah, times was different back then. I've been thinking lately. Maybe if we'd gone about it, different. Maybe the Indian wouldn't be gone today. Hmm. I'll have to ask Blackfish about that when I see him. Well, you got what you come after, Mr. Harding. To be honest with you, Daniel, no. I was after the legend of Daniel Boone. Oh, I'm just a fella who done some good things. A couple of things I'd like to do over and just happen to live a lot longer than most. A man don't set out to become a legend, Mr. Harding. Folks like you make him one. Be careful how you write it down. Gotta go now. Daniel? But don't you worry about, well, about getting lost? Mr. Harding? I ain't never been lost in my life. I was bewildered once for three days, but never lost. <laughs> Oh, hey, 
Whoa, 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 wait a minute. I've, I've got another... Where do you think he's going? How do I know? Did you hear that? Um, just the wind. Let's get out of here.